Greetings, Grapple fans! Professional wrestling in the United Kingdom was an extremely popular fixture on our television screens between the 1950s and the 1980s, with ITV's world of sport making household names out of wrestlers such as Big Daddy, Giant Haystacks, Mick McNannis, and of course, Kendo Nagasaki. However, with the rise of American wrestling on British TV in the early 90s, the UK stereotype of overweight middle-aged men slapping each other in bingo halls with angry grannies climbing into the ring seemed almost jovial by comparison, so sadly faded from our airwaves. The next 20 years would be dark times for British wrestlers. Sure the odd one or two made it, such as Davy Boy Smith and Stephen Regal, but nearly all were slapped with a tired, look at me, I'm British gimmick, like they're running a Let's Play channel or something. But roll on 2017, and British pro wrestling has become a hot commodity once again, with ITV resurrecting world of sports for a new generation, the WWE snapping up new talent for their UK championship for the WWE Network, and even what culture and ICW making their way to television. So, to mark this triumphant return to the limelight, and a uh, tenuous way for me to leech ad revenue of their popularity. I decided to take a look at some of the British exclusive wrestling games out there. Now, there's some absolutely bonkers ones to cover later on, but why not start the ball rolling by looking at two games most of you have never even heard of? And amazingly, are both officially licensed by the WWF. Or the WWE, if you've been hiding under a panda shaped trademark infringing rock these past two decades. But even better, let's shoehorn in an awkward collaboration with an actual British wrestler. No, not Wes, as he's been a dick and he doesn't want to do this video with me. But one of the many pioneers of the new generation of British wrestlers. Former TNA British bootcamp star and Britain's only wrestling politician, Richard Parliament. Yeah! Hello, Mr. Bundy Jr. Thank you for the introduction. It's always lovely when individuals put a nice warm hand together for their betters. One of their betters? Piss off. Which promotion are you supposedly representing this grand revival in? What culture? ITV? The WWE? Because I don't recall seeing you in any of those yet. Silence! I will reveal all in time. As a respectable politician, I like to keep all my cars as close to my chest as possible. Thank you very much. The British equivalent of the Monday Night Wars is upon us, and I'd rather sit back and watch the battle unfold in front of me before I choose to side with any of these companies. It's not about who wants to side me, but rather who I choose to side with. But until then, I am just going to continue to enjoy the finer things in life before I decide to step back in the ring and give young scoundrels like yourself a bloody good thrashing. So, like a politician, you just bugger off on holiday as soon as the action starts then, eh? But there's no need to get shirty with me. You said you're coming on here to discuss old wrestling games, not threaten to hurt me. Do not worry. You are in safe hands, Mr. Bundy Jr. I am not here to give anyone a thorough wallop in today. <laughs> As you are aware, I have a massive retro game collection. So I am here today simply to promote one of the many other strings to my bow. My retro gaming channel on YouTube Top Hat Gaming Man! I am here to talk about wrestling games with you, and more importantly, those of which were only released in the United Kingdom. One would say they are games that Yanks can't wank? Well, you can kiss my ass or expect me to put you on a fact hunt episode. But can we please get started now? You may proceed. Thank you. Now, this isn't the first time a WWF game has appeared on home computers. That accolade goes to 1987's WWF Micro League Wrestling for the Commodore 64, Amiga, Atari ST and PC. But naughty old WWF saw dollar signs when a claim came calling about making an NES game of their franchise, and essentially swindled poor old Micro League out of their contract. Roll on four years and our old friends at Ocean were best buddies with a claim licensing the home computer rights to Bart vs the Space Mutants off them, but also subletting the WWF license off them as well. So, in 1991, our Mancurian mates had their first stab at the license, with 
WWF WrestleMania for the Commodore Amiga, Atari ST, ZX Spectrum, Amstrad CPC, and Commodore 64. In WWF WrestleMania, you take control of the sweaty leotards of either the Ultimate Warrior, the British Bulldog, or everyone's favourite Gorka Destroyer, Hulk Hogan. You make your way up the ranks battling Mr. Perfect, the Mountie, Noel Edmonds, Sergeant Slaughter, and even the Warlord in his first and only ever video game appearance. With this game, before each match, you get to choose a witty promo comeback for some pre-match smack talk. But don't worry if you're not any good at quips, it has absolutely bugger all effect on the actual game, making it all a total waste of time. If you can put some actual time into the game though and manage to defeat all of your opponents, the headline news of the Ocean Times informs you that you've won the WWF. I'm not exactly sure what Vince McMahon was thinking, giving away a multi-million dollar business as a prize like that, but then again this is the bloke who thought that the XFL was a good idea. It's quite apparent that Ocean were heavily influenced by the Tecmo arcade game WWF Superstars, as the art style, graphics and overall feel of the game is practically identical. Unfortunately, it's nowhere near as good as Superstars. Due to either the limitations of the hardware, or Ocean just letting utter twonks program the game, as there's no tag teaming, no two player co-op, and hell, the game can't even display both sides of the ring at one time. So we're left with this annoying flip screen thing going on. The 8-bit versions didn't really fare much better either, being locked to a single screen this time, and the Warlord looking more like Steve Austin, the Mountie looking more like an angry Bart Simpson, and poor old Mr. Perfect desperately trying not to look like a half hour sprite swap of the Ultimate Warrior. Overall, WrestleMania for the microcomputers is a rather underwhelming affair. However, in contrast, Crash Magazine would say that Ocean had captured the atmosphere of the sport perfectly. So with this, I draw one of two conclusions. Either Crash genuinely believed that this game is good, or instead this was a subtle dig insinuating that all wrestling is as bad as this game. Sinclair user also appeared to like this game for some bloody reason, though they did complain about the lack of difficulty options. Your Sinclair said the graphics in WWF are really slick, and also praised the multiplayer option which they described as the best two player game that's been seen in any specky fighting game. So I suppose that these journalists must have either had the poorest taste in the world, or never play Target Renegade or Double Dragon then. However, the Amiga version fared a lot worse. For once, Paul Presley rated it just 68%, hoping that whoever does the conversion of WrestleFest makes a better job of it. Well, we've got a long way for that, haven't we, Mr. Presley? Multiple decades and counting. But they did re-review the game a year later, knocking it down to 33% and recommending you save your pennies for body blows instead. Last time I checked, Body Blows was a bloody Street Fighter 2 ripoff, not a wrestling game, and they say incompetent gaming journalism is a recent thing. The bloody fools. Anyhow, undaunted by the review scores, Ocean had one more try at the WWF license a year later with WWF European Rampage Tour, released to coincide with the WWF's European Tour, obviously, and unfortunately not to coincide with the arcade game Rampage instead which ironically probably would have made for a better game. Released on the Amiga, Atari ST and PC, with the 8 bits only receiving a severely gimped Commodore 64 port this time, WWF European Rampage Tour is a tag team only affair, where you pick two wrestlers from an extremely generous selection of... four. Hulk Hogan and the Ultimate Warrior return from WrestleMania with new appearances from the Macho Man Randy Savage and Brett Agent 47 Hart. Hang on a second, my good man. For a game called European Rampage, where's the British Bulldog? Where's old Davy Boy Smith? The game was even made by Ocean Software in Manchester, which is where the British Bulldog bloody came from in the first place. Yup, out of all the wrestlers in the game, not a single one resides anywhere even remotely near Europe. Granted there was no other European wrestlers in the WWF at the time, Ludwig Borger wouldn't come into the company until a year later. But, why no British Bulldog in a British wrestling game? Honestly. Anyhow, as European Rampage is a tag team game, 
you'd fight a collection of hill teams this time around, made up of the likes of Sags and Nobs of the Nasty Boys, Earthquake and Typhoon of the Natural Disasters, Noel Edmonds returns again, this time joined by his crappy Ashens cosplaying mate, before finally meeting with Hawk and Animal of the Legion of Doom. But Sean Mooney, in his also first and only video game appearance, introduces your epic battles with these behemoths in several exciting European locations. To the news round Fing Chung for some reason. Such as the Britannic Arena. Ah, the Britannic Arena. What a beautiful place that venue was. I defeated Big Daddy Shirley Crabtree there, don't you know? In a Lord Mount Evans rules match back in 1998. Uh, you do know the Britannic Arena doesn't exist, right? Munich, Germany, Paris, France, and everyone's favourite European arena, Madison Square Garden. Unfortunately, European Rampage Tour is downright awful. To the point I'd even go as far as to say it's quite possibly the worst wrestling game I've ever played. I mean, sure people rag on how terrible WCW Nitro on the PS1 was, but at least you wrestled in that game. In this, you just Rochambeau each other in a bollocks until one of you falls over. Luckily, 90% of the time that's in your favour, as the AI normally prefers to wander around the screen aimlessly until you decide to beat the shit out of it, and the fact you have to defeat each tag team three times over before going on to meet the Legion of Doom means that you'd have fallen asleep long before you'd gotten that far anyway. In fact, the only good thing about European Rampage has going for it is the fact the music it's absolutely amazing! It's the first ever wrestling game to have the actual wrestler Fing Chu's playing, rather than MIDI renditions like all other games had up until that point. Well, at least on the Amiga you had them anyway. All the other versions sounded like someone trying to strangle a cell phone with their ones. But what did our friends at early 90s gaming magazines think of European Rampage Tour? Well, see you Amiga loved it, giving it 74% believing it's the best wrestling game on the Amiga, but then go on to say it's a kid's game. Wrestling for bloody kids? How many kids do you know that can perform a full Nelson like I can? But on the opposite end of the spectrum, I mean, uh, Amiga, Amiga Power hated the game, giving it just 18%. But Amiga Power appeared to be run by complete imbeciles. They joked about Kendo Nagasaki not being in the WWF, but had they actually done their research, they would have then learned that there was indeed a Kendo Nagasaki who wrestled for the promotion. Albeit for one match only though, but that Kendo was obviously not from Stoke. Further to this, the belivering idiots went on to state that wrestling would never work as a video game. Someone get these guys a job working for Kotaku! Whilst I agree that WWF Rampage is certainly not the best wrestling game ever made, I think it is grossly unfair that Amiga Format also gave it 18%, but then equally seemed to employ utter morons, as for some reason they tried to compare the bloody game to Street Fighter 2, stating, Ugh, where's the game? Compared to Street Fighter 2, this is sad, 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 sad. I suppose I understand what sort of angle Amiga Format were coming from in a way. After all, I once managed to spin in bird kick Andre the Giant in a match at Butlins in Bognor Regis. Okay, and in regards to wrestling games, that was it for Ocean. They never made another. Heck, they wouldn't even release another fighting game until Zero Divide on the PS1, and even that was a Japanese import. So, what did you feel about our fellow countryman stab at bringing the excitement of WWF action onto our home computers, Mr. Parliament? Since I am such a nice, honest man, I am going to have to tell you the truth here. These two games were both absolute abominations. They were not just an insult to British wrestling, but they were an insult to bloody humanity itself. If I was in charge of this country, I would have criminally charged these scallywag developers for indecent exposure of wrestling followed by a bloody good walloping from me. Then I would have shipped them off to our colonies, yeah. Perhaps some of our fellow countrymen did a better job of making wrestling games in the past. Well, fair enough. There are many other British made wrestling games. Some less a wrestling game, and more a window into the insane madness of a British game developer. But I think we'll save those for another time.
Thank you for watching today's video, ladies and gentlemen. If you are new to either of our channels, then click the subscribe buttons. I am sure all of us can be friends forever. Yeah. Oh, do shut up. Don't listen to him. We're best friends, really. Subscribe. Finally, I would like to give a huge thank you to this channel's patrons who allow me to work on content like this on a full-time basis. So shout-outs go out to... Sebastian Velez, A Murder of Crows, Carl Johnson, Heo Paulo Lopez, Nostalgia Collector, Ben Harradine, Corey Imar Senior, Capcom vs SNK, Ron Dinch, Evan Balder, Philip Manf, Azor Archive, Dropkin Varela, Michael Cullix, Ego, Jordan Durant, Angel Light 85, Ian Boyle, Nick Daniels, Princess Zana, Daniel Daly, Computer Man, House of a Ted, Gary Pinkett, ECU Professor, Johnny Holly, August Piazza, Justin Wang, Hermes Gonzalez, Instant Gratification Monkey, Man Shovel, James Bishop, JB, Michael Hall, Wesley saying he, Drew Peacock, Langston Miller Noob, Sarah Powell, Vlamic Rene, Marvin Araliga, TOG Driver, Adrian Hannington, Bernard NG, Dan Van Dammit, Louis Viant, John Bates, David Bow, Chris Fisk, Michael Bruno, Rick67, Antonio Rodriguez, Craig Jenkins, Retroverse.com, Casey Wright, Synth Spaces, Punk Toast, Gunther Hendrix, and everybody else who backs my work over on the Patreon platform. Thank you very much.